What are you doing here? I'm here for the third show! Oh! Hi guys, welcome to Just Born Movies. My name is Joseph Tapia. This is the show where we take movies that are fresh out the Hollywood womb and we dissect them for you because we're sick bastards. Today my guest is Paul Workman, the man of constant hatred. Paul, what did we see today? Uh, today we saw Den of Thieves, starring Gerard Butler and Curtis 50 Cent Jackson, directed by Christian Gutekind. Bank bangers, these are not the National Bank Hollywood job. Laguna and Nigel. We nail these guys. We solve all these cases. This is the crew. Let's pay him a visit. Do we look like the types who will arrest you? We just shoot you. They're addicted to heists. Sooner or later, they'll need their fix. At the Federal Reserve, billions of dollars are taken out of circulation. Den of Thieves stars Gerard Butler as a hard-nosed cop who's on the trail of a group of bank robbers as they look for one big score. So, Paul, let's start with what worked for you. Um, what worked for me is uh, a, a lot of the technical stuff worked for me. Um, it's a real slick film. It's real pretty looking. Uh, the DP did a, a wonderful job. Uh, it's, it's edited really well in a lot of parts, especially in the opening sequence, which uh, is... Uh, a, a really good sequence of uh, an armored truck being robbed outside of a donut shop. And everything about that scene is just wonderful. So what didn't work for you? <sighs> Things that didn't work for me... Um, a lot of the writing's really cheesy. Uh, they try so hard to make the characters seem threatening and badass. But they talk just so inconsistently and so in silly cliches that it's hard to really get into any of the characters. Uh, the story outside of any of the heist moments is all pretty bad. Um, and uh, there's, there's really not a, a, a performance in the entire film I can point out as a really good performance or a breakout performance. And I, and I have to agree on a lot of those points. I mean, technically speaking... Uh, they have some really good people uh, behind the camera. Uh, the editor, you know, cinematography is really nice. Um, some of the shots are even set up really nicely and um, executed pretty well. But it's the stuff that's in front of the camera that we, as an audience, I couldn't find myself really caring about. Mm -hmm. um, I did really like um, in this movie, I really, for once, I didn't find myself hating Gerard Butler. Um, hmm. It's kind of surprising. Didn't really like him either. Um, yeah. Um, I liked his acting. Uh, that being said, what didn't work for me were the characters. Now, right. when I said that I liked Gerard Butler, I liked his acting in this movie, but I did not like his character. Characters did not make choices that made sense for them. Um, yeah. We have a lot of bits of uh, Gerard Butler's family. Um and they have absolutely no payoff whatsoever. You know, Jar Gerard Butler plays this, like, grizzled cop who uh, gets on, you know, every everybody, and um, and most people don't like him. Yeah, he's he's essentially he's essentially supposed to be like Big Mackey from the Shield, which was an amazing character. Yeah, and they said, hey, let's let's take that character and give him to Gerard Butler, and he doesn't have quite the gravitas that uh, Michael Chiklis did on the Shield. Uh, so, yeah, he ends up making really weird choices for no particular reason whatsoever. And there's even moments where he seems to be completely clairvoyant. Uh, and Glaring plot hole. <laughs> just, just, yeah, I don't know, I don't want to give too much away, but like near the end of the film, something happens and he's like, oh, let's just go do that. I know exactly what to do. I know exactly where to go and who to, who to look for at this place that I told you nothing whatsoever that i know about and it yeah there's so yeah again even the writing the, I, I mean i gotta agree with paul the writing is not that great any scenes that really stood out for you um unfortunately the, aside from there's two heists in the film two really big heists that are a lot of fun um true so so we'll go with the good ones first the, the opening heist as i said is is phenomenal 
it's edited well, the music's good, it ratchets up tension just perfectly. Uh, and then everything after that just kind of goes downhill until you get to the second heist, which is just as good. Um, there, there's a lot of good things that are happening in that heist. Uh, it, it feels almost like an Oceans film uh, with, with the way it's set up and how overly complicated it is. But it's a, it's a fun overly complicated where it keeps you guessing, what are they going to do next? How are they going to get out of this? Uh, what are, how are they going to escape Gerard Butler? Yeah. Uh, so they're a lot of fun, the heists. Uh, on the flip side, I'm going to have to go back to something Joe said about the families. Because two characters get families in this movie, and neither of those families have any bearing whatsoever on any of the plot. They're just thrown in there for reasons? Yeah, it, it doesn't really add any depth to the character. It actually makes you dislike the characters even more. Right. So Yeah, so you get Gerard Butler, like the first time you see his family, he's coming home from a night of like drinking and strippers and suddenly he's got a family. And this is like forty five minutes yeah, into the film. And like it it's pretty it's pretty late in the film to be introducing the family. It really just drags down the plot <coughs> a lot. Yeah. Um, and then you get like 50 cent character is yeah he's in there i guess he he <laughs> says a line or two in every scene so he's supposed to look kind of like the strong silent type but he's mostly useless he's mostly useless and then you get one scene of his family where he's threatening his daughter's uh i'd assume homecoming dance because he says she's 16 so it's not prom uh some some dance this young man's coming to pick his daughter up and he like brings the young man into his garage where all these muscle bound guys are just sitting to threaten him. And it's, and you never see his family again. They're never talked about. Yeah. Was, that that was, was supposed to be <laughs> no payoff, no payoff. It's just that that was supposed to be his character moment. And again, he just kind of looks like a dick. So, so yeah, I, I have to agree. Uh, the scenes that I really enjoyed were when it was firing on all, pi all, all pistons. So it's, so to speak, um, it seemed like the movie was really, really going forward during the heist bits. Um, I think it just really gets dragged down during some of the more menial scenes that could yeah. have been cut out. You know, it's a lot of the expository stuff and a lot of the character building is done so haphazardly that it's it's just difficult to watch. I, I turned to Paul halfway through the movie and I said, "I think they're trying to be so many different movies all in one." I, I was. Thinking, if you've seen a, a movie written by Taylor Sheridan, you know, either Hell or High Water or Wind River or Sicario. Oh, yeah. They're trying so hard to be something like that. And, and there's there's a shootout that, that feels like it was just lifted straight from Sicario. Like, they're, they're on a freeway, it's complete traffic jam, and then there's just a shootout in the middle of it. And it's like, okay, so now we're doing Sicario? Yeah. And then... Um, and there's a lot of um, usual suspects in it, too, um, with some of the twists and turns that they take. Yeah. So, I mean, for me, uh, I, can, I can watch really bad movies. I can suffer through them because I can enjoy some of how hilariously bad they are. Um, for me, the things that are un, uh, insufferable are very average, mediocre movies, and this was one of them. Yeah. So, based on our rating scale, I'm going to have to go with pretty damn average. Paul? Yeah, there's, there's not a lot going on in this film that's necessarily good, um, as, as aside from those two scenes, uh, aside from... Uh, a few good choices here and there, and a, a couple of good laughs. Yeah. Um, it's it's pretty to look at, um, but mostly it, it's it's a colossal bore. I'm going pretty damn bad. What do you think of Den of Thieves? Let us know in the comments below. And as always, like, share, comment, subscribe. Hit that little bell icon to get notifications every time we post. That way you can check out Drinking Age Movies and Damn Fine Meats. And as always... And that was the moment Joe realized he didn't have a catchphrase. Stay classy, San Diego.